I want to take a second to talk about a question that a lot of people in the church ask very sincerely to God. And uh, it's probably the wrong question to answer. A lot of people get the answer to this question. And uh, they're actually asking the wrong question in the first place. And that question is whether somebody is a prophet of God. That sounds on its face like a really, really good question to ask. And uh, so, for example, is, is, is President Nelson a prophet of God? And I've had family members, um, and they put the work in, they've done the study, they've gone back and read his old conference talks, and then gone in prayer and asked God if uh, President Nelson is a prophet of God. And they get the answer, yes. So, uh, why, why would I criticize that at all? That doesn't sound like something that I should be criticizing, does it? And uh, so let me take a second and we'll go back. And by the end of this video, you're going to understand very well uh, why that's a bad question to ask. It's the wrong question to ask. There's other questions to ask that are way, way better. So uh, back in the Old Testament, in the Bible at the time of Moses, uh, there were some people that came up to Moses and said, Hey Moses, uh, there's a few guys outside the camp that are prophesying. Will you please go and tell them to stop? Because obviously they wanted, they thought Moses should be the only one to be giving uh, direction and prophesying. And you probably remember this story. Moses said, would to God that all men were prophets and that he would put his spirit upon them. So Moses personally wasn't threatened by that. And uh, in fact, he was pretty happy that other people were prophesying. Now, that's not actually my point. Mm -hmm. Here's my point. If those people who were prophesying outside the camp, or even Moses, let's suppose that two weeks later, they were found to be uh, committing adultery or stealing, or maybe they maybe they said something that wasn't by the Spirit, that was uh, not from God, that was a doctrine that was uh, straight from Satan. Let's let's suppose that. Um, would those people have thought at the time, well, because they prophesied once, um, everything in the future that they say or they do is good. So, for example, they committed adultery. I'll go commit adultery. I can steal now. I can uh, do bad stuff. Or this new doctrine that they introduced is uh, has to be perfect because the old doctrine was. Because they've been a prophet once... By definition, they're prophesying. Um, are they always going to be so in the future? And you would say, obviously not. Uh, obviously, got to use your common sense. And, uh, you know, in the Doctrine and Covenants, um, it says that uh, we are supposed to discern when people speak by the uh, by the Spirit. So when, when a prophet is wrought upon by the Holy Ghost, and he speaks by the power of the Holy Ghost, then... That is from God, otherwise it is not. Now, unfortunately, um, the LDS Church has uh, changed the doctrine as it was understood in the time of Joseph Smith to the, the so-called doctrine that the prophet cannot lead the church astray. And uh, if the prof prophet can't lead the church astray, then everything basically the prophet says is, um, is correct, and you can't criticize him. And that's become the the uh, pattern and what the church says. And people will say, no, no, that's not it. But you, you, you get the conference talks by, what was his name, Haney? From uh, from April, where he, he said uh, that uh, President Nelson squishes his uh, plastic water ball, bottle in a certain way. And so everybody else uh, is doing that now. That's a really, really bad talk. Um, basically, it's saying... Just whatever Nelson tells you or does is is perfect. So let's go back to the question at hand. If the if uh, you ask God if uh, let's say President Nelson is a prophet of God, what you're asking him, um, and and you've done the study from his old conference talks, what you are asking him is basically has he had a prophetic gift in in the past um, that's what you're really asking him and but you're not really asking that because you're not really being specific 
And what you're doing is you're bringing a bunch of his uh, good fruits, uh, his old conference talks, which are, there's a lot of good stuff there. So you're bringing that to him and you're saying, hey, Heavenly Father, um, uh, I've read these and they're great. And I just want a confirmation that this is good. And uh, at that point, what answer are you going to get? Um, you are probably going to get a yes on that. Um, and there's another reason that you're going to get a yes on that. And uh, th that yes is for the very same reason that people are really uncomfortable with me even making this video. Because people in the comments are going to really criticize me for even making this video and saying, here's here's a better way to ask this question. Here's, here's what you're really asking. Uh, people don't even want to address the subject of whether you should ask whether somebody is a prophet of God or not. And because people are so uncomfortable with that, um, basically we're saying that we don't even want the no answer. Um, it would be too hard to get that no answer. And that's why, that's why people will criticize me for this, this video. What happens when uh, you ask God whether somebody was a prophet or not is that you are asking them, the real question you are asking is, is this guy, everything he says in the future, can I rely on it? Um, and uh, that's, that's a really dumb, dumb question. You're asking that without asking it and without actually doing the study about the future. So you're basically saying, can I turn my brain off in the future um, regarding this person and just follow him blindly? So that's really what you're asking, but the fruits that you are considering are his old fruits and not his, his future fruits. And God just does not want the people who have the intention of turning their brain off and following blindly uh, someone. So I, uh, and you might think that's actually ridiculous for me to say, but let me give you a couple of examples. I have one family member who I talked to who said, um, you know, the brethren are so much more spiritual than I am when it comes to, you know, being prepared for the last days or whatever. I'm just going to rely on whatever they say and follow that because they're just way more spiritual than I am. So that guy has given up his agency in favor of um, somebody else. Um, it's putting an idol between him and God and basically saying, I will follow that middleman instead of uh, instead of risking it all by working on my own spirituality and my relationship with God. Um, second example also from my family is uh, someone who said, um, I will never not follow the prophet. So this is an example of someone putting all of their eggs in the prophet basket. Now this is after that person received an answer to the prayer whether, the, whether uh, President Nelson was a, was a prophet. So be, based on his actions of the past, um, this person has projected into the future that they will always do whatever that person says. Again, that is uh, making uh, a man, uh, arm of the flesh, as the Book of Mormon refers to it, um, an idol. Now, you might think that's harsh language. Um, we actually practice worse mm -hmm. idolatry today than we ever practiced in the past. You think of the children of Israel again. Um, Moses goes up for 40 days. Children of Israel get restless. Aaron makes them a golden calf. And by the time Moses gets back down, they're worshiping the golden calf. That sounds really, really bad, doesn't it? Um, it's not as bad as worshiping a person who will tell you what to do. Uh, because then, um, I mean, you, the calf's not going to tell you what to do. Uh, the calf's just a stupid, dumb piece of metal. Um, but when you put your spirituality and your direction in the hands of somebody else and uh, you allow them to lead you around, that's worse than, uh, than your stupid, dumb idol. Um, it's a worse kind of idolatry is it's putting, 
uh, putting your faith in the arm of the flesh. That might si- sound harsh, but really, instead of listening to God, instead of learning to hear His Spirit, um, you are instead um, putting a middleman in there. And they can tell you whatever they want, and you will just do it. Again, you're going to say, no, that's not the case with me. But I will actually prove that to you. So years ago, we had in the LDS Church, President Benson, or Elder Benson at the time, um, who preached very, very directly about the dangers of the United Nation, and that they were setting up a global communist conspiracy to uh, create a one-world government, and that this was basically um, Antichrist and it was endangered the freedoms of all of all people. And the church, not just Elder Benson at the time, but also David O. McKay and the other apostles, every, and everyone in the church uh, followed the lead of uh, Elder Benson at the time. And they really, really, really believed that. Well, in our day, um, we have the direct opposite. The church has gotten in bed with the UN. They give our uh, tithing and our humanitarian donations to UNICEF. Um, they brag about that in conference. And we basically say, it's all good. It's all good. So what has changed? Um, did the UN change? No, they're just as bad. Actually, they're worse than they ever were before. But because people put their um, faith and their spirituality in the uh, arm, arm of the flesh, and they give it to somebody else, they change their mind as quickly as the person that they're following uh, changes their mind. So apparently uh, the UN is good. Apparently it's good to give your tithing and your humanitarian donations to UNICEF at this point. Apparently that's okay. And there are a lot of such things that would have seemed appalling years ago because you were following the arm of the flesh, you're following a man or a prophet, because you're following a new man or a new prophet, all of a sudden you're, you are okay with that. Um, and again, this is because you've set a uh, man up as an idol. I'm not saying that you should not follow um, the correct precepts of a prophet of God. You definitely should. But you have to take each and every precept, everything that they teach, and you independently have to know um, about that. It's like going to Sunday school and having somebody in Sunday school tell you what the lesson material uh, said and meant um, in Sunday school. Or you come to Sunday school and you know the scriptures like the back of your hand, and the teacher gets up and starts teaching something that's incorrect, and you raise your hand and you say, actually, that is the complete opposite of what that says, and let me tell you why. And you independently know the scriptures well enough that you can have a discussion about that. Now, maybe the teacher's right, maybe you're right, but at least you have your own spiritual opinion because you've done the work on that. So it is meant for us to take the Holy Spirit as our guide in the last days, as the parable of the ten virgins says. And uh, if we do that, then we should actually struggle with everything that a man or the armor of the flesh says to do. We should never say, I will never not follow the prophet. Um, Saying that somebody is a prophet of God or asking the question of God, is that person a prophet of God? The intention of that is to turn your spiritual spirituality and your agency over to that guy, uh, carte blanche. Um, just the whole the whole thing. You, God, I'm I'm just going to do whatever this guy says, and I can tell you, God doesn't want that. There is no spiritual growth in that. So that's why that is a very bad question, and it's very damaging uh, to somebody who asks it and probably gets the answer. That they want to get out of that so um probably probably better to change your your questions to individual ones and then with everything study it out in your mind like god told oliver cowdery oliver cowdery was told he could have something kind of like this one it's like sure you can do this like sure you can follow the prophet and then afterward oliver cowdery was uh wondering from god well 
you said I could, you said I could translate. And God came back to him and he said, well, you only thought to ask me, but uh, you need to study it out in your mind. You need to do the additional work. So God really wants us doing the additional work. And uh, that's something that, and it's kind of unfortunate, we need to be doing every day, 24-7, all the time. It's a real struggle, but there is no growth without struggle. So, and there is zero growth when you turn something over to a man or a woman of God 100% and sit back and do what they told you.